Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, let us the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please sit for the lesson? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. At the sound of the crowd gathered, and were bewildered, bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not these who speak Galileans? How is it that they, we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your son, sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show protons in the heavens above, and the sign of the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mists, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. And so we pray. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. 
through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the collect for the Queen's Platinum and Jubilee. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the reign of your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and for the example of her loving and faithful service, which she has shown among us. Help us to follow her example of dedication and to commit our lives to you and to one another, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our gradual hymn this morning, Come Holy Ghost, 124. <laughs>
hear the Holy Gospel written in that according to St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning to read at the 8th verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if in my name you ask for me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm sure, like many other preachers this morning, I, I had a moment in the week thinking, well, it's only one of the church's most important festivals and a once-in-a-lifetime jubilee of the longest reigning British monarch in history. Not much to cover there, then. The vivid imagery of the Pentecost in Scripture is one of my favourites. I love the idea of the Holy Spirit making its entry by breaking down the language barrier, the barriers of nationality of different languages, by st stirring up the faithful, quite literally by blowing winds which disturb and excite in equal measure. And then for anyone who's seen the early paintings, there are those wonderful images of the licks of flames of fire, the power and strength of the Spirit descending on the disciples, who at that very moment become apostles, not those who follow, but those who lead, and resting on their heads like uh, wonderful, surreal quiffs of flames which of course today continue to be re represented by the bishops wearing mitres. That's where the funny hats came from. It's a fantastic scene. It's busy, unexpected, challenging, full of energy and excitement. Nobody knows, are they drunk? What's going on? Nine o'clock in the morning, they've clearly never been to Castle Lake. <laughs> At root, of course, is much else besides. It is the revelation of God as Holy Spirit, as Comforter, showing that as promised, God will not leave us alone or comfortless. It continues the revelations begun 50 days before, through the resurrection, through those wonderful post-resurrection appearances, the Ascension, and now Pentecost. Here, those who once followed Jesus are being empowered to be sent out to continue his work, 
This is their great commission, if you will have it, their ordination. And it is, of course, because of that, the birthday of the church itself. The apostles, in short order, have had their lives upended. Their future, as they imagined it, was to follow Jesus, to listen, to learn, to assist, to be in the background, to help his earthly mission. But their future is to lead the initial and faltering steps of his body on earth, the church. Few of them had any experience. Few of them were people of learning, training, possibly even enthusiasm. They didn't choose volunteer to do this, to be front and center, but they did it. They knuckled down. And just over 70 years ago, a young mother of two had her life upended when her father died young. She was propelled into the public eye, into a role that she has with unparalleled distinction, fulfilled for a record 70 years. The Queen has spoken of the fact that she had no apprenticeship. Her father died too young for her to have had the kind of training and handover she might have wished for. It came when her own life had settled into a deeply happy, newly married life with two small children, what she'd always wished for with the man that she always wanted. Her commissioning, which was called her coronation, in its own way no less confusing and surreal than the events of Pentecost. Rain, but no wind or flames, but rank on rank of extravagantly dressed old men, following time-honored traditions loaded with meaning and significance. Among them, the queen looks so young and tiny, and yet has a remarkable assuredness, a trust that she is taking on a life's work that God intended. Prince Philip had the inspiration of allowing the public to see this spectacle by inviting in the television to be a part of it. And yet there was a single moment which was not broadcast, when under a canopy, the young queen is anointed with holy oil, marking her out, wearing as she does at that moment, the same stole that clergy wear and the cope of those who are ordained, taking on the yoke of the calling of God. This is her sacred calling and Her Majesty has patterned her life on the teachings and examples of Christ, the Son of the God she follows. The Apostles had their licks of flame. Her Majesty had that very heavy crown. They all obeyed the call of God to service, service of God and his people, service that would demand an entire life, and service for which they felt unprepared or inadequate to fulfill. And what has struck me most about this jubilee was picked out wonderfully by the Archbishop of York in his address at St. Paul's on Friday. Not unsurprisingly, he used the metaphor of horse racing, one of the Queen's greatest passions, to make what I thought were a couple of enormously perceptive points, that in fact, her reign has been far more the grueling course of the Grand National, a long haul over many obstacles with all their inherent risks than the smart dash of yesterday's derby. And for the Queen and for the Apostles, it has been the work of a life, full of life's challenges, full of its triumphs, but also full of its disasters. It has required persistence, self-discipline, and a willingness always to be thinking of God and others before self. His Grace added one further bit to his metaphor, which I saw delighted the Princess Royal, who was beaming, when he added, that the Queen's life had been contained far fewer dressage moments than folks might have thought. Meaning, I am sure, that we can forget sometimes that her life is not all elaborate ceremonial 
fabulous jewels. All those trappings she knows full well are not the job. It has been a life of focusing on the well-being of others, of standing above the vicissitudes of passing moments, trying to offer a sense of continuity, of calm, of a life centred on the eternal verities that have always motivated her. Think on the gifts of the Holy Spirit as laid out in the Acts of the Apostles and the stories of this Pentecost, and you will see what those called to bear witness are called to try and live out. The gifts of the Holy Spirit for which we pray are patience, tolerance, kindness, forbearance, forgiveness, love, mercy, and truth. Above the day to day, all the baptized are called to try as best we can to incorporate these gifts of the Spirit for which we pray into our lives, into our actions, so they may always be our guide. The Pentecost was the sending out of the first generation of Christ's ministers, and the Queen's coronation was her anointing for the role she has wonderfully fulfilled. It is in the carrying on in faithfulness, in the attention to the needs of others, and never losing sight of what once started us all on our paths of service, that I believe is central to both of these stories. And as this weekend reminds us, the examples of faithful persistence, of duty and service, are and always have been more persuasive than words. So we celebrate God's gift of the Holy Spirit to challenge and inspire us. And we say with all sincerity, God save the Queen. Amen. Amen. We stand now to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. Do you believe in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us pray. At this time of Pentecost, we pray for God to fill us with his Spirit. The response to, Lord, come to bless us, is, and fill us with your spirit. Lord, come to bless us, and, and fill, fill us, us with your, with your spirit. spirit. Generous God, at this time of Pentecost, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit, for a fresh in-breathing of life and power in each church community, which breaks down our barriers and sets us on fire with God's love. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit as we pray for those who help us to understand your purpose and presence in our lives. We pray for our bishops, Graham, Alan and Jane, that they may have strength for their work and grow in wisdom, holiness and love. Loving Lord, we commend to you the life and work of our own group of parishes here in the Nar Valley, particularly praying for Richard as he leaves us during our vacancy. We ask that we soon be in a position to move forward in our search for a new incumbent to lead us into the future. Father, as the celebrations for the Platinum, Platinum Jubilee reach their climax today, we give thanks for our Queen's long lifetime of devotion and service to this country and to the wider world, 
which has always been underpinned by a strong Christian faith. We give thanks for the many events planned and performed in both our own group of parishes and in the country at large, and not least including the spectacular concert at Buckingham Palace last night and the wonderful floral displays all around us in this church, all of which have demonstrated fitting tributes to a remarkable woman. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Lord, we thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit as we pray for our troubled world with so much conflict, suffering and pain because of disputes over race, religion, and the ownership and use of the world's natural resources. At this time, we pray especially for the people of Ukraine as they continue to endure untold suffering and injustice at the hands of an unprovoked aggressor. Even in this darkest of, darkest of hours, and despite entrenched bitterness, we ask that ways may be found to negotiate a peaceful end to this tragic conflict, and that those that try so hard to do so may be blessed with your peace, tranquility, and patience, despite all the pressures. We ask for the grace for all people to see this world and its needs and problems through the eyes of love, hope, justice and mercy, for the grace to abandon prejudice and build bridges of reconciliation. Father, we ask you to keep us confident of your love, wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the healing of your spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. We ask for all those who suffer in mind, body or spirit, that they may be restored to health and wholeness of life. Among those of our own community, we remember especially those known to us, and among them we pray for David Kirkland. Gwen Wallace, Sarah, Amelia, Kelly Sanderson, Christine Rayner, Brian Rayner, Anna Lottie Smith, Matthew Wise, Isla West, Stephen Milner, Julia, Linda Spenner, Richard Rappel, Catherine Stasica, Priest, Corinne Brooks, Peter Ashton, Mick Felgate, and John Bauer. In sickness and in health, Lord, come to bless us and fill yes, us with your spirit. Father, we give you thanks for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We praise you for all you have given us, for all you have done for us, for all that you are to us. In our weakness, you are our strength. In our darkness, you are our light. In our sorrows, you are comfort and peace. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us to do. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the fruits of your Holy Spirit, that we may live lives marked by faithfulness, by gentleness and self-control, by patience, kindness and goodness towards all we meet, and by love, joy and peace in our hearts. So may the Spirit of Christ bear fruit in us. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and, and fill, fill us with your Spirit. Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit given by the risen Lord, as we remember all those who have gone before us. Heavenly Father, in our own diocese, we remember with thanksgiving the life of Ian Bentley, our Archdeacon, who has died after a brave battle with cancer, which was born with faith and with courage. We pray for his wife Caroline and their family. 
We also pray for the souls of those in our, of our own community who have, who have died recently. We pray for Leslie Anderson, Michael Townsend, Valda Ashton, Helen Freeman, Helga Griffiths, and Ruth Clare. And we also pray for the souls of those, the anniversary of whose death occurs around now. We pray for Jean Evans, George Driver, Dennis Razelle, Pamela Ellis, Isabel Chapman, Paul Green, and Mavine Gill. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let the light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, we ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal love. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Generous God, you send your Holy Spirit upon, upon your Messiah in the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your spirit as we rejoice in the fellowship of St. George, St. James the Great, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Mary Magdalene and all your saints and commend ourselves to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, Accept, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand for the peace? God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You can offer a sort of wink or a smile, raise your eyebrows, that kind of thing. And uh, just, um, I don't think I've ever been able to do this. This is a classic uh, English announcement. If in wet, if wet in the church hall, uh, but it's this afternoon celebrations in Castle Acre have been moved to the village hall. Uh, so please, if you're going, note that, otherwise you'll be stood on your own in the wet. <laughs> and can I also say, draw your attention to uh, the notices for the services for the week on the back, but importantly, uh, tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock at Narborough Church, our community joins with Valda's family in her memorial service there. So all are invited, uh, you're all welcome. So if any are able to be there, it's two o'clock tomorrow at Narborough Church. And our offertory hymn this morning, Come Down, O Love Divine, 120. <laughs>
our prayers. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. Put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks that after he had ascended far above all heavens and was seated at the right hand of your majesty, he sent forth upon the universal church your holy and life-giving spirit, that through his glorious power, the joy of the everlasting gospel might go forth into all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share in this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Mary Magdalene, St. George, St. James the Great, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The blind is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We drink this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, no one knows me to share one bread. The body of Christ keeps you in eternal life.
Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love. We Pentecost, towards the age of the Spirit, now the flame of heaven rests on every believer, strong and weak, women and men, tell our children that the young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of life is made known, source of freedom, giver of life. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. For 50 days we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the power of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and have prayed for the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead. That it might be at work in us. As part of God's church here in the Nile Valley, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting Him to be your guide? By the Spirit's power, we will. Will you dare to love each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's darkest places? We will. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost Bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We stand for our final hymn, 479, Lord, the light of your love.
Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.